Hi, I'm Arlene from Molly Mish, and today I'm going to give you a tour of our van. <laughs> The road ahead, it twists and turns And the sun beats down and it burns But I keep, keep on pushing through And every step quicker than the last My feet tread down this beaten path And I keep, keep on pushing through Cause I get up And I may fall right back down So we're a family of five that have been traveling the world for the past 12 years in different vehicles. This is actually our fifth one that we've lived in. It's a 2017 Sprinter 170 wheelbase 4x4. So this is our van behind us and I'm going to give you a tour starting from the outside. Starting with the front of the van, we didn't really do anything to the front with the only exception is that we blacked out the Mercedes emblem using Plasti Dip. These are the tires we've chosen for this. We switched over to the BF Goodrich All-Terrain TA KO2 tires, and we just think that they're the perfect blend of quietness on the road and ruggedness off-road, and also um, really strong sidewall protection for, you know, when you drive on places, like we came here on a rocky dirt road, for about four miles and you know I don't really even have to think about you know sidewall punctures these are really great tires this is a aluminous side ladder uh, fully welded aluminum anodized black it's a really really great ladder because we use this to climb up to uh, clean our solar panels up on the roof and also usually we have a surfboard on the surfboard rack. So I use this ladder to climb up to tie the front of the board down and the front roof racks up there. And then I climb up to the back to get to the back one. Down here, again, we have the KO2s. But what I wanna show you, I don't know if you can see, in here we have helper springs installed. So instead of adding a, a, a leaf spring as helper springs, we opted for Sumo Springs by the company Super Springs. They make uh, these Sumo Springs specifically for the 4x4 Sprinter, and they've been really great. They probably added another half an inch to an inch back after we finished the build inside. We added some weight, obviously. So by having these Sumo Springs in there, it really prevents the, uh, the van from bottoming out and also adds a, adds a good bit of rise and cushion to the ride. Right here, this is uh, one of the two windows. We got one on each side. This is a European style window made by a company called Arctic Turn. These are uh, one of their smaller ones. We did pretty well. I feel like that we got lucky by not making any mistakes on um, both of these windows. We had to cut holes in the roof for the ceiling or the for the roof vents as well. But these are great because they have a closed position where you can lock them and they're totally sealed. Weather sealed so air can't air and liquid water can't go in and out. And then you can crack them open just a little bit and still use a little channel here to lock that. And that way we can get some airflow, positive airflow to kind of suck through the ceiling fans. And then from there we can do an open position and then a wider second open position. And then we have uh, just a mosquito netting in here to keep the bugs out. This window is also double paned. It's uh, I believe acrylic basically an airspace inside here. So even though it's a clear see-through window, it does still have pretty good insulating qualities. Okay, so let's go around. I'll show you guys some more. We're trying to keep our van as short as possible. Being in Europe, there are a lot of ferries that take you to different islands, and those ferries can cost a lot based on the length. We're just under seven meters, which seems to be a lot of the price difference when you go from island to mainland and vice versa. So again, the only thing we did was to black out the Mercedes emblem, which we really like. So on the roof, we've got a few different things mounted. The Mercedes comes with these uh, mounting points for roof tracks. And we got aftermarket roof tracks that are basically the same as the Mercedes roof tracks installed before we mounted all the insulation and the wall paneling on the inside. So we got two tracks going down both sides. And from those tracks, we have some Yakima racks that are mounted. 
And on top of those Yakima racks, we have the row shower four, which holds seven gallons of water that's heated by the sun. So that's a row shower and it's also made of aluminum, food grade aluminum. So that's also just extra seven gallons of water for us. And also we have here is a uh, 10 foot Dometic awning. We had to kind of custom make these brackets uh, with our friend who has a, uh, a welding machine and some scrap uh, aluminum extrusions that he helped us sort of fabricate these mounting brackets that uh, go into the tracks. And we use some other aluminum extrusions to fasten it into place and to tie it to the other side of the van so that it's really secure. This is really great because we often camp out in places like this where having shade means that we can leave the doors open without heating up the inside of the van, which is really cool. And on the roof, we also have two 175 watts of uh, solar panels and they're made by a company called New Power. They fit perfectly across the middle of the van where we can still have two fantastic fans mounted, one directly in the front and two slightly to the back. So having 350 watts of solar has been perfect for us. Well, that's it for the outside of the van. So let me hand it over to Marlene to show you guys the inside. Come on in. So this is our hangout area and we opted to put swivel seats from Eurocamper on both of uh, the captain chairs. And that really opens up this whole area for us and for our family to hang out at. Just for hanging out, for eating dinner, for drawing, for doing school. So we have different options for this area. The first option that we made was a little office table for Dan to work on. Put his laptop on here using a lagoon table. Um, we have another option, which we'll show you in the back, but we have a large table here that we can um, put in the middle here so everybody would have a tabletop in front of them, which is great for eating in school. It's a little bit of a pain to put up, so we usually just have this little table here or nothing at all. So when we first built out the van, we tried not to have a cab over storage area, but quickly realized there's we just have a lot of stuff. And so... We made an easy access area, uh, mostly for the kids. Uh, all the kids have, it goes pretty deep. All the kids have a bag, like one of those um, cubes of clothes for, them, for themselves. So each kid has a color coordinated cube of clothing. We have like our underwear and our socks up here, easy to get to. We have our everyday jackets in here. We have our uh, shower towels in here. We have grocery bags in here and it's just easy access um, and we wanted to make sure everything up here is lightweight and cloth in case of an accident or anything anything that falls out of here is just fabric but while we drive we just have this simple bungee cord that we put and just gives us a little extra security we didn't want to have something permanent in there because it makes it harder to pull things out so this was the best thing that that works for us. So we used a half inch plywood with uh, aluminum edging here and we mounted it onto the B pillar here. And we also mounted it on the part of the A pillar in there. I don't know if you can see. We used L brackets uh, to secure it in place. And that gave us a little bit of space here um, for our storage above our visor. So the kids have their hats and a hairbrush that's easy to get to. So on Dan's side, he has some electronics um, and he routed a USB charging station for, that's routed from uh, our house battery. And that charges things up front um, and doesn't drain our car battery. So we have uh, Bluetooth speakers. We actually have a little TV watching area. He can actually mount his camera here and, and have that charging while we drive or while we're parked. It's super easy and we don't have to worry about draining our battery. And up here we just have uh, the basic Arca Swiss mounts that we mounted on the cab over plywood that we installed. So when we drive and get to camp, we swivel these seats and then stuff that's on our bed or extra stuff gets shoved and kind of hidden up front. So we have guitars, we have a uke, 
we have a laundry bag that sometimes is little, sometimes is large, depending on how much, if it's laundry day or not, that kind of gets tucked in here. No reason to have a dedicated space once, because it changes size. We have a PLB40 from Dometic. It's a portable lithium battery that um, we can keep charged in the car and take with us outside or to a coffee shop or even use it in here if we need to. It's nice to just have an extra option for power. So during our original build, when we finished it in about 30 days in California, we decided not to have a diesel heater. Um, and that was something we regretted as soon as we got to Europe because the winters here are really cold. And we had a propane heater that wasn't efficient. It was burning our propane. Romania, we got a Wabasto diesel heater installed. So the hot air exits through here. We have a temperature controller on this side of my seat and the exhaust comes out underneath our car. So underneath the kids bench seat, that's where all our homeschool curriculum goes. We have Legos, we have more toys, um, a backpack of extra toys. So it's kind of like the kids area, anything they want to keep, they keep down here. Okay, so let me show you the back uh, living area now. Um, the first thing that we have here is our Dometic CFX 375DZ. Top loading fridge that we really like. There's actually two different uh, doors and we can actually make one or both sides into a freezer if we want to. Right now we have it uh, both in refrigerator mode. So when we left California, we actually had a, a different fridge. We had a Dometic 65, which was a shorter fridge, but it was actually taller. When we switched the fridge, we had to change the footprint of this fridge box a little bit more. So this is the original footprint is here. And what we did is we made this part a little bit longer and we made it a little taller here, which is which ended up being a good thing because we built in some extra cubby space. So in this area, we could put, um, we put like tortilla and bread, things that go bad um, easily. So we remember we have them. Um, and then over here, we have our silverware and cups that we store and it's easy for the kids to get to, get to when they need to. In this fridge box, um, we opted not to have a door there. So we have this curtain on our on our fridge box because it gives us easy access to a couple things. We used to have a cat that traveled with us on uh, entire North America and when we got to Europe she passed away. Um, so this is used to be her litter box used to be on this side and she used to crawl in to use the litter box and that's why we have a fabric curtain instead of a regular door. But it's also great because this is where we keep our toilet and it's easy for the kids to pull in and out when it's just a piece of fabric here versus a door they have to open and maneuver. So when you have to use the restroom, we pull out the toilet, put it in the floor, do our business, put it away. Okay, so when we rebuilt this uh, fridge box, we, we were really missing um, storage for our spices and some large bottles of olive oil, hot sauce, and wine. So this is a, that was a perfect time to um, to add this, so we just put um, brass piping here to hold everything in place. Um, and the kids can have some of their favorite rocks and sticks that they play games with here. Uh, easy access for kid drinks, spices. We actually have some Sahara Desert from Morocco with us everywhere we go. So this is where we put our shoes and we're constantly sweeping dirt off the floor. So this is where we keep our hand brush also. Uh, kids have actually a few more reading books and journals here. This is where we keep our toilet paper and paper towels. This whole area used to hold our propane heater. And when we um, got rid of that, it became more storage for us. And this is angled because we wanted to maximize the space. Every inch in a van matters, especially for a family of five. Um, so that's how this idea came to be. And of course, a beer. Beer opener is very important too. So this is our main kitchen area. Um, it's comprised of a Dometic stove sink combo with a folding faucet, two burner. Um, we use both burners all the time. 
it's a good size for us and we like that we can kind of store it away and clean up the space. We did a very simple backsplash with actual um, real tiles and grout. It's held up pretty good. There's some cracking <laughs> that we need to redo with maybe something with more flex to it. Um, but the regular grout has held up. It's just where it connects to our Ikea countertop here. So we have uh, two doors here. In the first door, this is where we keep all our bathroom stuff. And this is our water system. We have two Aquatainer seven gallon blue jugs that hold fresh water. We have one specifically for gray water. And we actually also have a propane box built in in the back. You can kind of see it here. So the reason why we chose portable jugs instead of a permanently mounted water, water tank is, especially in Europe, it's hard. They have different systems here. It's not like you're, there's RV parks with big spaces all over, like in the U.S., you know, sometimes they'll spigot, sometimes it's, it's so, it's just easier to pick it up, fill it, and then bring it back. We don't have to worry about trying to shimmy our van next to it. And on this side, this is where all of our food and pantry items go. We have all of our pots and pans in here. We have food up here, up here. Also, down here, we have uh, our Brita water with more storage. And we opted not to have any upper cabinets, so I don't have anywhere to put a mirror. So we have a little mirror here. Um, it was important for us to have a little bit of a homey feel in here and for the kids to remember all the different places that we've traveled to over the past 12 years together. So right now, these are most, all these pictures are from our North American travels from Alaska all the way to the bottom of Mexico. I got these printed at Artifact Uprising. They're just uh, thick cardboard stock. I probably should have laminated them because there's some splashes from spaghetti sauce, but otherwise they held up pretty well for the past two years. We've been in an Airstream. We went to a four wheel camper. We went, went to a casita for a little while. So we've tried different uh, setups and what works for us as a family of five is having permanent beds. I didn't want to break down every day. I didn't want to have to move the comforters and the pillows somewhere like I did in all our other campers. It was super annoying to me. My number one thing I wanted in this van was a permanent bed solution. And so we have all three kids up on the top bunk. Uh, we just have some mattresses, foldable mattresses that we found on Amazon that held up pretty well so far. And down below is where Dan and I sleep. We have uh, cabinets on the side that help uh, hold up the kids' bed. So this is where we keep the majority of our clothing in here. These just open up and everybody has different color cubes for their clothing. It's a little bit of pain to get to, but that's why we have that cab over where we have our everyday clothing. When we need to refill our clothes, we just come grab it from here and throw it up there. So as you notice, we don't, we don't have any upper cabinets and we did that on purpose. We wanted to be, to have a open feeling like we're not claustrophobic in here since this is our full-time home. So we opted to have storage down below. So we can access it from inside and from the back of the van as well. So from the inside, this just lifts up and we can get to our storage, our batteries, um, things like that. All right, so this is the back of our van. Opens up. You can see a, a better angle for our, uh, our bunk bed system here. And the windows that Dan showed you earlier, so th this is recessed here and, it's a, and it gives us some fresh air going through, uh, a ledge for lights, for charging our cameras, a place for our phones as well. And then we have uh, extra storage in here that's just with cloth. This is actually, this is not a surfboard here. We have our surfboards on top, usually. This is a surfboard bag where we put a wooden table that sits up front. So if we want to set that up, that's an option. Otherwise, it helps things stay in place back here. So back here, we have all of our stuff. We don't have gear like mountain bikes or anything else. This is just our extra shoes, our winter coats, tools, uh, we have an extra seven gallons of water back here. 
Um, we have like little cubbies here where our chairs go. Um, it's really cool that we got to build it out because we got to make custom areas for things that we own and that we use every day, like a collapsible ladder that we need. Uh, and on this side, we have our 100 watt portable solar panel also. The kids really like having the, the bunk bed up on top and they have like little areas up here, as you can see, they can decorate it um, with Polaroid pictures or whatever else they want to put up there. Luca made some artwork and the girls like to take Polaroids. Okay, so that was a tour of a van. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions about any specifics, um, leave them down below and we'll be happy to answer them. Um, we'll make specific videos about our, our electric system and our water system and how different things work for us in separate videos. We just wanted to give you an overall uh, tour of the interior and exterior. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Bye. Cause I get up And I may fall right back down But your love lifts me back to solid ground Yeah, I get up Flag and call it quits So I keep 